And if you look at the very back page of our constitution and you look at the final article, that is where the reserved power is contained. And it's a power reserved to Her Majesty. His Majesty now. I mean, the text of our Constitution says Her Majesty would now be His Majesty. That power is not necessarily the powers which would be exercisable by the Governor. We need to therefore look at those final vestiges of what you might call constitutional colonialism and see how we would deal with them. Yes, when you come to the, the wording of the Governor, it could be called the Governor General, for example, uh, like in other places in the Commonwealth. And that signifies a different a role, a much more crown representative, quasi-ceremonial role, which is what I believe a future governor should have without any real constitutional competence. Are we ever going to be responsible for our own defence? No. Are we ever going to be responsible for our own external affairs? Britain might be willing to give us more say. Is it, going, is it willing to enshrine that in a new constitution in a way that c forces Britain's hand to act in the way that we say internationally but she does not agree with? Personally, I doubt that that can be achieved. Without having to disagree with Sir Peter that this is one model of a possible maximum level of self-governance short of independence, although maximum is a word that represents the most. And I believe that you can go a little further without edging into independence. The UN is a very political organisation and these decisions are taken in a committee of 24, which includes a huge proportion of Latin American countries. And those countries will have a say on our degree of decolonisation and our degree of democracy. So it's absolutely ridiculous. It's important for us to continue uh, reforming our constitution um, and ensuring that any aspect of the relationship that in any way um, hints at a former colonial past is eroded. Uh, to go every 12 months to appeal to such people to respect our rights to self-determination is a thankless and fruitless task that will never yield results. Anybody in Westminster who believed that they could legislate for Gibraltar on an issue where the people of Gibraltar, having constitutional responsibility for all of those aspects of the running of Gibraltar, would turn around and accept that would have another thing coming.